in this problem we have a list of intervals and uh, an interval is a tuple it has two points start of the time and end of the time so this is one interval and we have many such intervals and it's not sorted in any order so you have to merge these intervals so if we have intervals like this so you can represent intervals by straight line two points start and end start has to be less than end and uh, then we have another interval let's say this one then we have another interval like this and then some interval like this and then we have this so let's say we have these five intervals so you see that this is separate i1 this i2 i3 and i4 has some overlap between them like i2 has not yet ended but i3 has started similarly i4 is completely included in i3 so these all three are overlapping so we merge them so this is new i2 and this is separate so we will call it i3 so these five intervals are, are returned as three intervals so let's take a concrete example so we have this 1 3 2 6 8 10 15 18 and the result is this the merged one so we see that 1 3 so it starts here at 1 ends at 3 this 2 6 it starts before this here and ends at 6 so you see that these are overlapping so we merge them so minimum among these is 1 and maximum here is 6 so this is one common interval 1 to 6 then 8 to 10 so 8 is completely outside this 6 even if one point is overlapping that that is in place of 8 it had would have been 6 then we would have merged it so this is a closed interval so we include both start and end 8 10 is separate then 15 18 is also separate so we have these three merged intervals and these may not be sorted in this case it was sorted but it can be in any order and in this problem you can assume that this intervals list is non-empty so you don't need to worry about base cases of empty so what approach we can take is that uh, it is very convenient if the intervals are sorted in ascending order of their start time because it makes the processing very natural like we as a human being how did we process it we saw 1 3 then we saw next interval next interval means this interval starts after this and then next one starts after this so if it's in sorted order of their start time we can easily compare with the previous one and we will get to know whether there is overlap or not so what we will do first we will sort intervals based on start time so what time it will take it will take n log n time any standard comparison based sorting algorithm where n is the number of intervals in this case we have four so this is first step now we have to iterate through this intervals list now it's sorted based on start time so what we can check is that uh, let's say we have we are iterating through all the intervals i n in this intervals so this has again two components start and end that is 0 and 1 so if i n 0 is more than the previous end so let's take two more variables start equal to this take the first interval sort in the sorted so interval 0 0 and end is interval 0 1 so if the current intervals start time is more than whatever was the end running end then this is a distinct interval a new interval we have found so what we will do whatever we have been saving the start and end time we will insert into our result so result dot 
push back or insert or add whatever is the data structure you are using this result start and end this denotes one interval and so we inserted it into the result only when we found a new interval so we have been merging it by updating start and end in fact start we were not updating only end and then we reset start now we have inserted till here so start is now pointing here end is pointing here so set the start and end here else if this is not the case that is the start of current interval is less than or equal to the previous end that is there is overlap so either it's like this form where start of current interval is less than previous end or it can be of this form also so let's say end was here next interval is here it starts before it but also ends before it so we will pick just update end here end equal to max of end and current intervals 1 and finally we will return the result also in the end we will uh, insert push back the last interval because we will never get a chance to insert the last one so in the end we will write result dot insert whatever is the running start and end these variables so let's uh, write the code for this and we will write it in java c++ and python so first let's write in c++ so first step is sort and by default it will take the first element which is start so we will not use any custom comparator here So this i is the interval, i0 means the start of the interval is more than whatever was the end till now that is before this interval. So this is the case where we have to insert it into the result. So this means separate interval not overlapping, no overlap. then we will insert it into the result and then reset start and end so else case means overlap so we will not insert into the result just update the end max of end and i1 so maybe the end was already more in this case uh, this new interval i is completely enclosed in the previous interval then this will not be updated it will remain the previous end and finally in the end for the last interval uh, if it's not discrete we will not get a chance to insert it so uh, let's say last interval is discrete then also we will insert the previous interval update the start and end but we will never insert that so that's why but start and end 
are correctly updated. So we just need to insert it. Even if it's overlapping, we are updating the end. So no matter what, for the last interval, we have the correct value of a start and end, whether it overlaps or not. So we are just inserting it and return result. And this is as expected. So let's submit. And the solution is accepted. And if you see, we are right here around 72% of the submissions in terms of time and memory also we are around 91%. So that's good. So what was the time complexity? We sorted it. So n log n and then we iterated it just one loop. So this is O of n. This is n log n. So overall n log n and space we are using just this space, whatever we have to return the result. So this is mandatory space. You cannot avoid it. So it's O of n, but uh, if you ignore it, it's O of 1. Now let's uh, write the same thing in Java. And then we will write in Python. So we will give a comparator a b a b are intervals and these values within them are integer so we can use compare in built in integer and what we will compare a 0 b 0 that is based on start times of a and b a and b are intervals and then the result should be uh, this two dimensional integer array but we don't know the size beforehand how many intervals we will make so what we will do we will have list and then we will have int array and finally we can easily convert array list to array in the end so we will return using that and this part should remain same So this is a list of integer array. So new int and we initialize with these two values and this is fine. Here it will be math.max and again new int and it's a list and we have to return convert it to array. And its size should be result dot size and the second dimension is two. And this solution is also looking correct. And it's accepted and it takes 5 milliseconds so it's even better it's around 95 percent of the submissions finally we will do it in python python 3 so simply call intervals dot sort and it will sort on the basis of first element
and the python solution is also accepted